to get you started with Boomi and show you how to uh, run some tests. So once you get the your account created, you download the software, and then you'll have an icon on your desktop that looks like a Petri dish. It's, it looks like EMB with um, E. coli on it. It's kind of a red, red auger with green bacteria. So then you're going to type in your username and your password. Okay. And then you'll go into the lab. So come over here to where you see the unknowns. Click the down. Uh, you cannot, once you finish one, you can't go back and redo it. So I found that out. So this is the one I want to do. Unknown one. So do I want to begin this? Yes, I do. So the first thing you see is a case history. And so you just read through this. This is an example of the bacteria that you're trying to identify. This is a disease caused by it. So you just click OK. And then you're going to see a gram stain. And this is a pretty poor example of a gram staining because you, as you can see, you've got purple and you've got pink all mixed in there together. So this is not a very good example. Um, if you look, uh, and again, this, this is not great. So you'll do the best you can with it. If you look right here, you can see that they're round. There's some diplo and there's one individually, but here's some chains right here. So this is gram positive. You see a lot more purple and they're chained and there are caucus. So you come down here to gram positive cocci. That's what it is. And then you say, okay. Now there is a very large database that has lots and lots of bacteria in it, dozens of bacteria. And you're trying to identify, uh, you're trying to, identify one out of those. You've been assigned one. So every time you run a test, you will eliminate some, hopefully, from that database. Now, what we just eliminated from that database is everything that's gram-negative and everything that's bacillus. So the only thing left in the database are the gram-positive cocci. So to see what's in your database, now you go up here to View, Identification Matrix. So you're going to want to spread this out because it's not that small. So enlarge this. And these, the, the bacteria are listed across the top. So this is what's left in the database. Your unknown is one of these, but you see it scrolls on over. So that's not all of them. We've got to eliminate that down to one, uh, one bacteria. Here on the left, this is these are the tests that you can run. And again, you're going to scroll down. So what you, when you look at this, this is for every one of these bacteria, it tells you if they're positive or negative for these tests. Uh, you'll see some D's in there. So you look down here and, and see that that's only 26 to 75% positive. What you want to do is you want to find a test if you had a test where everything was positive or everything was negative, there would be no point to run that because you wouldn't eliminate anything. So ideally, what you want to look for is a test that has about half positive or half negative. Um, the susceptibility or not, I would stay away from those unless you absolutely have to run those. Um, this one, Catalase, that one is, that one uh, looks pretty good. I want, I'd like to run a fermentation for you and then I'll come back and maybe do that catalase. I'm trying to look and see, just eyeball it. Don't try to count or anything like that. Let me scroll down a little bit. See if I can find one that uh, looks pretty good. All right, this one right here, this mannose fermentation, you see there's a lot of negatives and a lot of positives. So that's the one I'm going to run. What I would suggest doing is have a scratch piece of paper and write down some information as you go along. It'll save you a lot of time so that you don't have to go back and look at this again. So mannose fermentation. So write down the name of the test you want to run. 
and then that's all we do here. We're just looking for a test to run. So I'm going to get out of that. And now I don't know anything about this test. And so I'm going to click on that T right there in that yellow box. That stands for test. And so I want to find out something about this mannose fermentation test. So go to the index, uh, click on the M, and look for mannose fermentation test. There it is right there. So this tells you all about the test. It tells you why you run the test and all that. The information you need is right here in how is the test performed. You've got to know what media you use. So right here it tells you phenol red mannose broth. All the fermentation tests use that same media. So you're going to write down phenol red mannose broth. You inoculate the tube. You're going to incubate it at 37 degrees for 24 hours. Most of them are, that's the way you do most of them. You also need to know what is positive because you're going to have to indicate is this positive or negative. A positive test consists of a color change from a red to yellow. Because with fermentation, you produce an acid, you get a color change. So red to yellow is positive. So write that down, positive, red to yellow. So you can remember this. Down here is step by step by step. So if you need this, um, you could take a screenshot or print it or, or something because it's going to be the same for all, the, all of these uh, tests. So then you get out of that. You come back over here to the lab. This is an incubator. This is a 25 degree incubator. This is a refrigerator. This is your 37. This is the one you'll be using most of the time. This is biohazard, Bunsen burner, and uh, your microscope. Before you get started, I would like for you to go up here to help and this quick start tutorial. It's a very short little tutorial. Uh, so you can watch that little video. That'll, that will give you some good information. So now we want to run our test. The first thing we need to do is get the medium. So we go up here and we're going to look for phenol red mannose broth. That's the one we said we needed. So and when you're going to give it a name, just give it a short name. Mannose. That's so we can find it in the incubator. If you were running multiple tests at the same time, it'd be more important. So now we are going to run this test. So you need, you see that, that you're a hand right now. So you want to go up and change to a loop. You need to be a loop. So we come over here. We're going to turn on the Bunsen burner. So we're going to right click, turn on the burner. And you come over here to this, the yellow one has your bacteria in it, and the red one is your medium. So we're going to get bacteria from this tube and put it into this tube. You'll notice that you have these uh, lights up here. This is inoculation and contamination. If this gets up to red, uh, you probably want to just throw your tubes in biohazard and start the test over. You're better to start the test over if you, if you make a, a bad mistake than to in, then have wrong results. So we're going to remove the lids. And then I'm going to pick up this yellow one. You hold down the, the left mouse and move it through. You're flaming and it tells you, you see the little words there? It tells you that you've done that correctly. Now you come over here and flame the loop. It'll turn red. And then you're going to go straight into this one. Don't wiggle it all around. Do it like you're really doing it. Go down into that liquid, come up, and it tells you inoculum stabbed. And then you come over here, straight in, straight out. And it tells you that the media has been stabbed. So now I'm going to pick these up again, flame them again. Remember we did this in lab. Right click, replace the caps. You want those uncapped at the least amount of time possible. Flame your loop again until it it's red. And then we're going to turn off the burner. And then you pick up the red one. Hold down the mouse and then you put it here in the incubator. 
All right, it said to incubate it for one day for 24 hours. So we're going to come up here to new day. You click that. All right, now it's now it's the next day. Come over here to the incubator, right click. There's Manos. Left click and it's red. So now we're going to right click. We're going to record the results. So we did not see a color change. Um, positive is red to yellow. We did not see that. So this is negative. So that's negative. And we say OK. And now it just magically disappears in the biohazard. So now we go back up to view identification matrix. And wow, that was good. Now we're down to, uh, we've got them all the way down to this. So that was a good test to run. Um, I'm going to run one more test to try to keep this video uh, fairly short. Um, I think Catalase look like a good one. Let me go back up here and see where's Catalase. Yeah, Catalase looks like it uh, would be a good one to run. So I'm going to write down the word Catalase. That's the test I want to run. Come over here to the test. Go to Index. C. And let's see, where is the Catalase? Oh, it's just a video. Awesome. So we're going to look at a video. This is a test that we would have run if we were in the lab. Um, you're going to look at this little... You're going to watch this little video, and we're, let's see how the, well, I'm not getting this little video to play. Hopefully you would get this video to play. Um, all right, it will play when, I, hopefully, this is just the, this is just the information about it. All right. All right, so let's go up to the test, and we're going to look for Catalase. All right. All right, this Catalase video. It's just from the view drop down list. All right, okay, I didn't read that. Sorry about that. View Catalase. All right, here we go. We're looking for bubbles. If it's bubbles, it's positive. They just put the bacteria on the slide. This is hydrogen peroxide. Uh, no bubbles. No bubbles. So that is negative. All right, so it is negative. Okay. So that was all there was to that one. All right, let's go back up to view, identification matrix. All right, now we're down to this. So this is how you do this. You would look and see if you can find another test to run. Um, the, all of the fermentation tests are run the same way. See down here you've got some that have negative all the way across, don't run those. That's, that's a waste of your time. So look here, this one, uh, starch hydrolysis, that might be a good one to run. Um, urea hydrolysis, I think those, the color changes from red to magenta, which might be a little hard to tell, but um, this is another one, growth uh, at 45 degrees. So pick one, read about the test. If you think, I don't know if I can run that accurately, then, then look for another one. Here's another fermentation test we could run. Um, when you get through with the test, you will eventually get down to, when you look at this, when you look at the identification matrix, you will have one left. So I would need to run a couple more tests and I would have one left and then you're done when you get down to one test. When you get when you get to that point, then when you get to unknown and it says identify, you come here to identify. Now, right now, I still have that whole list that's left. But when you get down to one, there'll only be one there. And then you would select that one. You would say, OK. And then it'll say, are you sure? And then you say, OK. And then hopefully it says, congratulations. 
that you've identified it correctly. If, if you have not, then you'll have to pick another unknown and start all over again. I need two of these done correctly. The other important thing to remember is when you get through and you've identified it and you've done it correctly and it says congratulations, come over here to file, submit lab report. Are you sure you want to submit it to your instructor? Yes. And it will email me your lab report. You must do that. If I do not have it, I cannot give you credit for it. So make sure that you do that. It might be nice to, when you see that, congratulations, take a screenshot of it. But make sure when you're through, file, submit lab report. So, and then you would come back right now. There are not very many here. I have not created very many, but you'll come back here when you want to do your second one. Some of you may end up running this three or four or five times before you get two that you've done accurately. So that's why I'm saying, if you're not sure about a test or if you do a test incorrectly, you normally will kick out your unknown and you don't know it. You can come up here to view lab report. I have not been able to see my lab report. It's not letting me see it. But even if you can see it, it will not tell you if you've done the test correctly or not. It will not tell you any of the mistakes that you've made. But when you're through and that emails to me, uh, then all of your mistakes will be on there. If you've left the burner on overnight, if you forgot to flame your loop or any of that stuff. So I want to see these things clean and done, done correctly. So hopefully this uh, is helpful to you. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know.